any normal person would have probably been like, I'm so sorry, please throw that out. No. Hi, my name is Jonathan David Maynard. I worked at Subway for six months, and these are my horror stories. This is my personal favorite story. I love this story. So it's a normal evening, as usual. You know, everything's done. I'm almost out of the door. We get done closing. I'm, I'm sweeping, you know, patio sweeping and wiping down all the tables like I'm supposed to do. It's a beautiful night. Looks like I'm gonna get home early, folks. I go outside and I'm changing the trash, right? And then it's this lady, she comes, you know, she got like half a mouth of teeth. And then she comes up and she got this, like this really rat voice. She's like, hey, hey, let me, let me get in there. Let me get in there. And I'm like, like, man, I'm like, no, like, what are you doing? She's like, hey, I, I left my stuff in there. Let me, let me get in the trash. Let me get in the trash. And I'm like, ma'am, what I told her was, whatever's in there, it's not in there no more. But what I really wanted to tell her was, get your get the out. <laughs> That's what I wanted to tell her, right? And I'm like, ma'am, I'm sorry, but you have to leave. And then she was like, oh, oh, no, nah, you're trying to try me. You're trying to try me. And I'm like, ma'am, no, I'm not, I'm not trying to strike blame. Ma'am, you just have to leave. We're about to close. And then she's like, no, no, you know, you know what I got for you? You know what I think of this place? She had denim shorts on. I kid you not, she had denim shorts on and she ain't had no drawers on. Bro, she literally hiked the denim shorts up her ass. Bro, I got denim on right now. You can't even pull this, man. Like, it was, it was just so bad. Like, she hiked the denim shorts up her ass and made a thong into it. And I just seen these big ass brown ass cheeks just, just fall out the damn shorts. And then she's like, you know what I think of you? Just start swan time bombing her ass on all the tables that I just got done wiping. She just went, uh, huh, you like that? Uh, huh, you, uh, you like that? On all the goddamn tables. So I'm just like, all right, man. <sighs> Ma'am. You really gonna have to leave now. I'm gonna call the police, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna call LAPD. And then she was like, oh, I don't care about 12. And she threw her set up and she was like, come on, let's go, let's go. And I was like, all right, all right, I'm gonna get to you. You want some? And then she was like, yeah, let's go. And I was like, all right. So I ran inside and I locked the door and I called the cops. That's what I did. And she got mad. She started, you know, banging on the window, spitting on it and stuff. And I was like, hey man, you know what? It is what it is. Like, I'm not gonna go out there and fight no man. I mean, no woman, sorry. Hi, my name is Nick Thur. I worked at Subway for a whopping week and this is why. So, typical day at Subway, as far as I knew for being there for a week, you'd come in, set everything up, get behind the cash register, make sure that's all good. Uh, making a sandwich was pretty cut and dry, no pun intended. You'd literally set up the bread, get their order. It's very clean, I would say, behind the sneeze bar. You'll see where I'm going with this. The horror day, which I can't believe you're making me relive this. A woman came in, ordered, uh, I don't remember what kind of sub it was, but it was a sub, obviously, Subway. I take out the bread, I cut it at a attempted 45 degree angle, begin layering what she wanted. She's very persistent, in a hurry, wanting to get me going, um, but she's also a little pushy and a little in my face. We get to the veggie portion which is almost near the end. I've already got my meat, my cheeses, all that, all the goodies. We start doing the veggies and she's very, this woman's getting uncomfortably close. She's grabbing the guard to kind of like point out what she wants and I'm like, all right, I've seen this before. She's a little nosy, doesn't know personal space. I let it go. She starts scooting closer. I'm like, put your glasses on or something, lady. This is getting uncomfortable. You are honestly like, like real close. Like it was bad. I think maybe a little bit of salt or Pepper was in the air, I don't know. She uh, she sneezes on me. I don't know if you guys remember this, the, the fans that you could, had the water bottle where it was like a spray mist, I felt like I was at a water park. But because she was hovering over the glass so far, it was also all over her sandwich. Any normal person would have probably been like, I'm so sorry, please throw that out. No, not even a wince. She continues picking out her order as I'm about to throw up on myself. I did what any good Subway employee would do and I finished making the sandwich. That was my last day. Hi, my name is Mason Luck. I worked at Subway for two months, and this is my horror story. So I started working at Subway when I was 18 years old. It was my first job, and I was finally gonna be making some of my own money and not having to ask my parents. I was working weekends first at Subway, which was fine, because it was the start of the day. You know, you usually get your normal customers, but since I had to do classes, I also decided after school, I would take on some night shifts. That was a terrible idea. So, <laughs> I go into my first night shift. It's around closing time, and my coworker who had been working at the subway for five years, she was getting her keys, she was about to lock the door, 
And before she could even get to the door, two men walk in. My coworker tells them, we actually can't have you in right now because we're trying to lock up and we've already got you know food packed away or we're gonna be going home. And so the guys are like, no, 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 like please like let us just order a sandwich. We'll like do it really quick. We'll like pay for it and be out of your hair in no time. Now mind you, I was already a little skeptical because <laughs> These guys were huge guys. Not trying to prejudge, but I already was feeling uneasy. And so we finished making their sandwiches. They pay, we put everything in a to-go bag so they can head out. And instead of leaving like they had said they would, they sit at a table right across from the register and unwrap their food and start eating. Me and my coworker are looking at each other and we're just kind of like, um, why aren't these guys leaving? Like, what are we supposed to do? Since she had more experience, I expected that she would be the first to kind of jump in and tell the guys they need to go. But instead, she looked at me and she goes, okay, you need to go tell those guys that they need to leave. I'm like five foot one at the time. I weigh like a buck, maybe like a buck two. And I'm like, you want me to tell these guys who are towering over me that they need to leave? So I'm like, okay, you know, what's the worst that could happen? It got worse. I go over to their table and I'm like, hey, like, I'm really sorry. I hate to be the one to tell you, but I'm really gonna have to ask you guys to leave. And they looked at me like as if I had just punched their grandma. And they just started yelling and getting very loud. And they were like, how are you gonna tell us to leave? What are you gonna make us leave? Like, you can't do anything to us. We're gonna stay here and we're gonna finish eating our food and you're gonna stay here until we're done. And at that point, I was like, okay, this could get very violent very fast. So I go back over to my coworker and she hears the whole commotion. And I tell her like, well, what should we do? Like. Should we call the manager? And so she's like, well, I don't want to bother the manager with this. I will call the police. And then she's like, go tell them that we're going to call the police. So me being naive, I was just like, okay, I'm going to go tell them. And then they're going to feel threatened and run out the door. They weren't threatened at all. And in fact, it made them even more upset. They continue to yell at me and tell me like, if you're going to call the police, you know, you're going to have another problem. I run back to my coworker who's now in the kitchen completely avoiding this whole confrontation and leaving me to deal with it. So I go to my coworker like, hey, so um, what did the police say? Like, how long, are they, how long is it gonna take them to get here? And she goes, oh, I didn't call the police. And I'm just sitting there like, okay, I guess we're gonna get murdered in a subway tonight. Like, this is how I die. So we're in the back just wondering when these guys are gonna leave. And we're at this point, we're thinking we're gonna end up spending the night here. I think like 20 or 30 minutes passed. Finally, like I hear from the front, the door open. And it was just like such a relief to just know that they were finally leaving. And I was so upset with the whole situation. And I was young and I was just like, I don't have to deal with this. Like I could just keep asking my parents for money again. <laughs> Literally the next day I called, I was like, I'm not coming back here. I'm never coming back. I'm never making another sandwich. And to this day, every time a friend is just like, yeah, let's go get Subway. Let's go eat at Subway. And I walk in that door just the smell of that bread baking and just everything in there just like haunts me to this day, which is so sad because all I ever wanted was a sandwich and instead I get trauma.